English for class 10 and today I am going to explain the poem Amanda written by the poet Robert Clay. So before I go into the details of the poem, let me tell you in short about this poem. Now as the title suggests Amanda, it is about a teenager girl and her mother and through this poem, you will be able to relate yourself as well. So, Amanda is all the time controlled by her mother. Her mother pinpoints her behavior and she doesn't like it. So, uh, that is all about Amanda. Now, let me go into the details of the poem. So, I will read out the poem line by line and then I will explain to you all. Don't bite your nails, Amanda. Don't hunch your shoulders, Amanda. Stop the slouching and sit up straight, Amanda. So, these four lines are said by Amanda's mother. So, Amanda's mother tries to control her. She tries to control her, not for any other thing, but only for her improvement. So that she improves her habits and her behavior. So, the mother tells her not to bite her nails. And not to hunch her shoulders. Hunch means to bend. Bend her shoulders. And to stop that slouching. Now slouching here means to sit in a very lazy manner. So she, the mother tells Amanda to be more active. To be more active as a girl. And therefore she says that she should not bend her shoulders. She should not be sitting lazily. Now, Amanda is in her own world. So, she is expressing her feeling, what is going on in her mind. So, these three lines are within the bracket. It is the feeling of Amanda. So, Amanda says, There is a languid emerald sea where the sole inhabitant is me, a mermaid, drifting blissfully. So Amanda is there thinking herself as a mermaid. Now mermaid is a cartoon character or a fairy tale character where it is a mermaid is a half human and half fish. So what is she doing? She is drifting, letting herself move slowly in the water, very blissfully, very happily. And there is nobody else there except Amanda, she is the soul, the single dweller. Inhabited means dweller. And the sea's language. It is relaxed and greenish. So she is enjoying herself in the sea. Now, the next stanza. Did you finish your homework, Amanda? Did you tidy your room, Amanda? I thought I told you to clean your shoes, Amanda. So the mother reminds Amanda of the various things she has to do. She has to complete her homework, she has to tidy up her room and then also she is reminded of about cleaning her shoes as well. Now Amanda, what does she think of herself to be? She says, I am an orphan roaming the street. I pattern soft dust with my hushed bare feet. The silence is golden. The freedom is sweet. So Amanda is not an orphan but she is thinking herself to be like an orphan without the control of her parents. And what is she doing? She is roaming in the street. She is moving about aimlessly enjoying her freedom. And she is patterning soft dust with her naked feet. She is raising the dust Enjoying that bit of work and designing with her bare feet, feet or naked feet. Now have you noticed the contrast in this line in the previous stanza? The mother is reminding her to clean her shoes and here she is moving with her bare feet. So that means what? She is enjoying her freedom. She is just ignoring what her mother is telling her. And the silence is golden. The freedom is sweet. So... Why is the poet using this word golden? 
only to let us know that for Amanda, the silence is very precious. She does not want to hear the nagging of her mother. And that is why the silence is golden. Freedom is sweet. Now the next answer. Don't eat the chocolate, Amanda. Remember your acne, Amanda. Will you please look at me when I am speaking to you, Amanda? So, Amanda is having her chocolate and she is enjoying her chocolate. Whereas her mother is telling her. She is, the mother is very much conscious and about Amanda's looks. So therefore she is reminding her that if she has too much of chocolate, she will get acne. So, Amanda is not listening to her mother. She is just ignoring what her mother is saying. So that is why the mother gets irritated and tells her to look at her while she is speaking to her. Now, Amanda thinks herself to be a Rapunzel. I have, I am a Rapunzel. I have not a care. Life in a tower is tranquil and rare. I certainly never let down my bright hair. So, Amanda again thinks her to be a fairy tale character, Rapunzel. And she is without any care. She is least bothered about her mother. And where is she? She is in a tower high up with all the tranquility. Tranquility here means calm and rare. So, freedom is very uncommon for her. And it is calm. So she says, unlike Rapunzel in the story, has very long hair, lovely hair, and she lets down her hair when her mother comes up to meet her. So her mother could come up the tower with the help of her hair. But here, Rapunzel, uh, sorry, uh, Amanda, uh, would not let her hair down because she does not want her mother to come up and nag her again. So therefore, she says that I will never let down my bright hair. Now the mother again tells Amanda, Stop the sulking at once, Amanda. You are always so moody, Amanda. Anyone would think that I nagged at you, Amanda. So, the poem closes with this tender. The mother says that Amanda, you are sulking. You, know? you, are, showing, you are showing that you are sad. And just because of your behavior, you are moody, you are sometimes happy, you are sometimes sad. So moody here means the, the sudden shift of emotions. So Amanda is sometimes happy, she is sometimes sad. And the mother says that because of this behavior of her, anyone might think that mother is nagging her. So you look at the irony. The mother is really nagging her, but she says that, she is saying her. And whatever she is telling her, others will think that she is nagging her and because of this behavior of Amanda. So that was the poem, Amanda. I hope all of you have understood the explanation. Thank you.